Welcome back. We are going to try take four here for this physics podcast on type of collisions. And the podcast will be fairly short because in this all I'm going to talk about are the concepts behind the types of collisions and what physicists call the different types, what's conserved in them, how you would um, approach those cons the items that are conserved from a mathematical standpoint, but the example problems I saved for a pin cast where you could actually see all of the work worked out and since I'm having such trouble with um, the tablet on PowerPoints, that seemed like a better way to do it. So let's get started here. Let me advance my slide. So two basic types of collisions. The first type is called an elastic collision. And a common example that's um, given for this in any physics textbook is billiard balls, like you saw pictured on the um, opening slide. So what's actually conserved? Well, in an elastic collision, and I kind of exaggerate the way I'm saying it, because if you just slide the words together, elastic and inelastic collision kind of sound the same. So I sort of exaggerate it when I state what type of collision it is. But in an elastic collision, two quantities are conserved. Momentum is conserved and kinetic energy is conserved. And if you look at the equations there on the slide, you can see there are four terms that I have in each of the equations. Um, so I am assuming that my system consists of two bodies that are having um, a collision type interaction with each other. So if you mathematically wanted to treat momentum conservation, you would take the momentum of the first object, which would be mass one, times the initial velocity of object one, and you would add to it mass two times the initial velocity of object two. Keep in mind these are vector quantities, so if the two objects are going in different directions to begin with, you do have to take that into consideration. And then you set that equal to the final momentum of your system. Mass one times its final velocity plus mass two times its final velocity. Again, remembering these are vectors. So uh, at the beginning of your problem, you're probably gonna have to choose a positive and a negative direction and then be consistent in applying those algebraic signs to the uh, mathematical values that you have. Kinetic energy is conserved in an elastic type collision. And so same idea. You add up the initial kinetic energy of the two individual bodies and you set it equal to the kinetic energy of the two final bodies. Okay, what other types of collisions are there? Second type is called inelastic collisions. And realistically, in real life on Earth, most collisions are of this type. So what's conserved? Well, momentum is still conserved. So mathematically, you're going to treat it just like you did for the collisions that are at the top of the slide where you set initial momentum of the two objects equal to final momentum of the two objects. However, kinetic energy is not conserved. So based on what you know about conservation of energy, that begs the question, well, if it's not conserved, where does it go? Well, it's transformed into other types of energy. Maybe um, potential energy, maybe when something, when two things collide, something flies up in the air. So you're converting kinetic energy into uh, gravitational potential energy. Maybe you are crushing something, so you're changing it and it springs back out, so elastic potential energy. Maybe work is done on the object. Um, you have a collision and the body is permanently deformed, so a force acted to move that object through a distance and permanently deform it. Heat, sound, etc. Any form of energy, but kinetic energy is transformed into some of these other types. Okay, there's also two subtypes for inelastic collisions. So let's take a look at those and what distinguishes those. Okay, come on slide. Okay, so in just a, basically an inelastic collision, momentum is conserved, kinetic energy is not conserved. So what are some examples of this? A ball hitting a bat? Well, of course you can hear it um, because when the bat and the ball impact each other. And so some of that kinetic energy of the ball, as well as the bat, was converted into sound energy. The ball itself probably deformed just a little bit as a result of that collision. A car crash where you've got a fender bender, um, work is going to be done, a force moving the fender of that car through a distance, and perhaps it results in, you know, a, a 
bumper cruncher is what I call it, where the um, hood of the car maybe ends up looking like a tent. And so work was done. You hear it. Um, maybe some parts go flying off into the air. And so gravitational potential energy was taken away from that as a result of the collision. So those are some examples of inelastic collisions. A second special subtype is called a perfectly inelastic collision, or sometimes you'll see it written a totally inelastic collision. In this type, objects collide and they stick together after the collision. So they move together as one composite body after the collision. It's still an inelastic collision, so momentum is still conserved. But notice in my equation, on the side where I've got final momentum computed, now I've got in parentheses mass 1 plus mass 2, because both the masses have now combined and they're moving together as one larger mass. Kinetic energy is not conserved because this is an inelastic type collision. And so you might say, well, what are some examples? Well, uh, in your homework, you just did a homework problem that involves a projectile impacting a wooden block and they stick together after the projectile embeds itself in the block and they move together as one composite body. Um, I don't know, maybe you're messing around in class and usually girls don't do this, but boys try it. Shooting spit wads and the spit wad, you know, it comes shooting out and it sticks on something. That is an inelastic collision. The two objects collided and stuck together. A football tackle where um, a defensive player comes and grabs the person carrying the ball and they move together as one composite body. So perfectly inelastic collisions. Momentum's conserved, kinetic energy is not conserved. For the examples for this, you're going to have to check out the pincast. I worked out three in-depth examples that go through all the math and all the pin, you know, basically all the pin strokes that are very difficult for me to record on a PowerPoint. So check out the pincasts and see you next time.